Hey, Neon Turtle fans. I promised that I'd come through with another knife review for you wilderness survival freaks out there. And today, what we're looking at is the Roger Linger Wilderness Survival Knife that I bought around 2005. Matter of fact, I think it was exactly 2005 because I will show you some of the things that uh, I have that go along with this knife, which is pretty awesome. So this is a leather sheath that it comes in by Jamie Briggs. You can see the Briggs emblem right there pressed into the leather. Very high quality sheath, really cool piece. Uh, there is another piece that goes along with this that um, I have stowed away somewhere. It's uh, some sort of a loop that goes over top uh, or actually it wraps around this loop so that you can hang it on your belt. But I don't have that with me right now. But this here on this sheath for this wilderness survival knife, you can see that your belt would go through here so that this is being carried scout style on the small of your back. You can see my Tom Brown tracker by Tops Knives review and see how the Kydex sheath works that way. I have to say with the leather being stitched so nice and tightly and the loops being very tight, that this sticks a lot more nicely on the small of your back. The weight of it is a whole lot less than the Kydex sheath of the Tom Brown Tracker. Let's just do a little comparison view here of the two knives side by side here. You can kind of see you got these this metal loop which sticks out way far on the bottom of your back and it's kind of shaky because you get all this space in there for your belt. But right here you can see that nice tight quarter here uh, that will not allow the you know the belt loops to slide around on you all that much if we look at the handles this is kind of cool you can see we have a much more ergonomic grip I guess the word ergonomic right then you would have on the tops knives Tom Brown tracker so Roger Linger did a great job on there. Have the Micarta handle, very nice, shiny, slick Micarta handle. And you got the little pins in here. Uh, it is a full tang and it is a tapered tang. Whereas with the Tom Brown tracker, we don't have a tapered tang. So it's full tang, but the thickness goes all the way back. It gives it that really strong tool feel. This feels a little more less toolish and I guess you would say more knifeish. So let's go ahead and unveil the Wilderness Survival Knife. Oh man, this is, this thing is mean. Now I have not used this. This is my zombie apocalypse knife. This is the knife that when the zombie apocalypse takes place, because we all know that that's gonna happen, right? This is the blade that I will be yielding. Look at that gorgeous gun blue blade. Down on the bottom here at the base, next to the handle, we see the RL for Roger Linger. Roger Linger was a knife maker back in the early 2000s mid 2000s. Roger was from West Virginia and I went and visited Roger's uh, tool shop and uh, I was really interested in knife making back in that time and I was actually working in leather and working with making leather sheaths and things of that nature and uh, I went to see his operation because I was really interested in getting a custom wilderness survival knife a WSK for the layperson and uh, and so I went to his his place and checked out his whole outfit just really nice superb blades the weight of this thing just feels so nice in your hands and if we look at the saw teeth on this bad boy i'm going to look at a comparison here in just a bit of the blades of the two wilderness survival knives the tracker and then the roger linger but uh just vicious looking mean saw teeth on here i think you could actually saw with this guy i've never used the blade though i'm just i want to hold off until the zombie apocalypse for the use of this blade this will be the one that i yield
Unlike the Tom Brown tracker, I would not suggest taking this thing and cutting open a, a can of Hawaiian punch or stabbing it through the side of a John boat or sliding down the sails of a pirate ship with the gut hook there that you see on the bottom. I wouldn't go chopping any redwoods down, although I think the Tom Brown tracker is most certainly uh, usable for such a purpose. But let's just look at a blade comparison here real quick. Let me get the Tom Brown tracker out of that there Kydex sheath. You can see the gut hook here is a lot more angled and steep and pronounced than that there of the Tom Brown tracker. You can see the, the marring on the epoxy coating that I have done to this blade, whereas this one is pretty pristine. I oil this baby down once a year, maybe a couple of times a year to make sure he stays nice and sheen. We look at the handle comparison here. You can see that you have a much better protection here of keeping your finger in place depending on your grip. Here we got just a little bit of a notch and uh, just if we turn the, the handle sideways. Look at that, look at that ribbage. There's a lot of ribbage on this guy, isn't there? Look at the saw teeth difference here. We've got a much more angled, jagged, zigzaggy pattern, whereas with here we got that nice notcher. The Tom Brown tracker is great for making those notches, but this guy, I think you could actually saw with this guy. So this is the Roger Linger Wilderness Survival Knife. So let's take a look at a couple of goodies that I have that go along with the Roger Linger Wilderness Survival Knife. Roger was really cool to give a certificate of origin. We can see Roger C. Linger and this was in November 4th of 05, and it's Wilderness Survival is the type of knife. It's a flat V uh, stock, removed or forged. It says stock, 01 tool steel, 59 hardness, uh, Rockwell C scale. And then it says that it did not have a zero quench. It is a leather black sheath, and it was knife number 42. So, you know, fairly early on in this creation. The cost of the knife was 625 plus 20 for the gun blue and then there was another plus 10 or so for something uh, honestly i can't remember but really cool nice nice piece now what was super neat back in 2006 january 2006 here we see that on blade magazine it was the world's number one knife publication we were to flip through to page 32 we will see a band of brothers, a small group of knife makers do their part to support some of our combat troops in action in Afghanistan. And right here is a Roger Langer wilderness survival knife featured as the big spread on the start of that page. So Roger uh, worked with a bunch of knife makers and they were donating blades to special ops and different soldiers and things across the nations. Um, it's really, really cool. So it says that Roger Linger was the spearhead of this particular effort, and he donated the Wilderness Survival Knife, a model with a six and a half inch blade, and this one was a 1075 carbon still that is both bead blasted and gun blued. I love that gun blue, just gives it that black look. Very stealthy, very black ops effect. So that was something kind of cool to have. A little memorandum, a little, little memory box that we have here for Blade Magazine and the Roger Langer Wilderness Survival Knife. I uh, forgot to mention that the sheath was molded, you see, to the, the blade to give it a uh, good tight fit. And uh, I actually, this thing is so sharp that at one point in time when I was putting it inside the sheath, it actually split the leather. I mean, this thing is super sharp. And I can remember when Roger went to uh, let me hold the knife, you know, when I went to pick this up from him, I didn't have it shipped to me. I, I lived close enough to Roger that I could go pick up the knife. And he said, be super careful because it is razor sharp and i mean this blade is mean man this is mean i hope you enjoyed getting to see the roger linger wilderness survival knife and i'm not going to do a big review of this and beat anything up with it uh, but i just wanted to showcase this thing for you since i said i would so i uh, don't know if roger is still making knives uh, last i looked there wasn't any information 
uh, listed on his website and uh, maybe he's just doing some personal sales. Uh, I do know that he injured his eye at one point in time. I think a piece of metal had flown into his eye. So hopefully Roger's doing well and hopefully maybe uh, anybody out there that remembers Roger uh, will appreciate this knife as well. Um, so, hey, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I will have some other cool wilderness stuff going on. I've been teaching my sons and daughter how to do a bow drill to start a fire. Uh, might have some wilderness stuff coming up. So stay tuned. If not, uh, watch any of my other videos. Stay neon, my friends.